Yo guys, Punk on another video. So just as I stated in the previous videos, I'm gonna be banging out as many helpful BG related videos as possible. And I think I'm probably gonna focus on Twink videos also a little bit considering that the last video that I made on the subject seemed to do pretty well. There's actually a lot to cover when it comes to Battlegrounds. There's a lot of little nuance or little details that you might not be aware of that make a little bit of a difference in the experience of BGs from the classic world to the retail or more modern expansions that you might've been playing for the last couple years. But for this video specifically, I'd say that a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about has been fairly consistent throughout every single expansion. We're talking a little bit more macro, just general things that you need to know, and specifically common mistakes that a lot of players tend to make in BGs that can hurt their ability to win more often, hurt their team. You know, little things that you can change that will drastically affect your ability to come out on top in the world of Battlegrounds. So that's the video today, covering the most common mistakes made in battlegrounds and classic wow hopefully this helps let's get into it so the first one that we're going to cover is something that i have a lot of experience with we're talking about back capping and specifically the most common mistake that leads to back capping which can swing a game entirely this mistake happens in a wrathy basin so back capping refers to a rogue or generally a stealth character it doesn't have to be stealth but usually it is a stealth character making his or her way to your side of the map and back capping your base so if you're an alliance rogue let's say you can run through lumber mill maybe win lumber mill or if you lose lumber mill go past it and then make your way to the farm which is on the horde side of the map and if there's one person there you can open on them kill them or sap them blind them cap the flag but a very common scenario that happens is people will cap the farm and then just leave it unguarded this is the mistake that i'm talking about and this leaves an opening for the rogue to come in on your side of the map cap your farm and then you're kind of stuck in an awkward position you're most likely trying to get blacksmith maybe lumber mill at the same time and this forces some of your players to actually have to leave leave that battle and go back to the farm. It's all about map pressure. It's kind of similar to like in League of Legends or in Dota where you're split pushing, you'll be applying pressure on one side of the map. You might be taking towers and that might force the enemy team to have to react to you and come all the way over. And in the meantime, your team can take the other side of the map and push there. So it's a macro play where you're playing the map and forcing people who are overextended and not paying attention to one side to have to come over. You put them in a limboed state where they're stuck in between both places. This is a very, very strong strong strategy and it's something that I've done on a rogue for a very long time. I've won a ton of Wrathy Basins on my rogues and various different expansions by basically just doing this over and over again. Going from base to base to base, back cabbing their side over and over and over again. It's harder in a pre-made scenario, although still a viable strategy, but in a pug world where the team will generally lack coordination and communication, you can fully disrupt their ability to play the game and force them to all be running around, spread out, and just that pressure can allow your team to pretty much dominate the rest of the map so you want to make sure that you always defend your back bases make sure that you have somebody there solid who can hold their own ground and of course somebody who can communicate saying there's a rogue here if he loses the 1v1 so let's stick on a b for this next one as well and this is something that you've probably heard a million times if you've done bgs the most common phrase that's said when it comes to this is don't fight on the roads and honestly this is very true and can't be overstated enough you'll find very often in bg where people are just playing for their KDA. They just want killing blows. That's all they care about. They want to be at the top of the ladder and winning, I guess, is maybe a second priority, sometimes even third. This is something you really want to avoid, not necessarily at all costs, but it's something that you only want to do if necessary. Battling on the roads makes sense if you're pushing your way through to another spot or you see somebody that's maybe trying to go to another base. You want to defend, you catch him halfway through on the road, finish him, send him back to the graveyard. But lingering around the roads and and providing absolutely nothing to the macro level play in Arathi Basin is a total mistake. Like with most video games, being good in 1v1s, being good at fighting, playing your own character is maybe 20% of the battle. In a lot of other competitive video games, there's a ton of people that are good at the micro level of the game. They're good at pressing their buttons. They have fast reaction time. But what separates the good player from the great player is the ability to strategize and play the macro level of the game. So this is definitely also true in Battlegrounds. You want to make sure that not only are you good at your class not only are you good at your character but you can hold your own and understand the flow of the battle where you need to be in order to be a fully fleshed out player who can really bring home the victory for your faction and not fighting on the roads is very important now not fighting on roads and understanding the macro level of the smaller bgs specifically is something that we can translate directly to warsong gulch so in arathi basin you hear don't fight on the roads in warsong gulch you hear don't fight in the middle and again this is something that you hear constantly but it's also something 
something that you should definitely take seriously and work on it if it's a bad habit that you have of consistently always just fighting in the middle of the BG and not paying attention to what's actually going on. I see it very often where people just kind of stay in the middle, maybe outside of the Horde's tunnel, outside of the Alliance tunnel, and just sort of waiting for a straggler or, you know, fighting little battles and skirmishes out there. And meanwhile, you have somebody who took the flag and went across the entire extremity of the map and no one even noticed. It's happened so many times where you'll literally have six teammates, five teammates in the middle just fighting and you'll see the enemy flag carrier run behind the berserker hut and just kind of make his way alongside the map. And those six teammates that you have standing in the middle fighting just having a clue that that guy just walked right by them. This is extremely prevalent in BGs. It happens constantly. If you're fighting in the middle of Warsong Gulch and you have a druid who's carrying the flag and he's running at the absolute extremity of the map, you might not even see him. And what most serious flag carriers do in classic is they'll constantly have noggin fogger applied to themselves. So there'll be a miniature sized skeleton. The skeleton in itself is just a white pile of bones. So there's less contrast and you can't necessarily identify him as well. And obviously if he's absolutely tiny and just sprinting, it's a pretty common thing where you might not see them. So when it comes to Warsong, pay attention to the flag carrier, pay attention to the actual game and don't just sit in the middle fighting for pretty much no reason. And this isn't to say that you shouldn't fight at all. Of course you should fight. You just have to find the right place to fight. Actually going after the enemy flag carrier will force reinforcements to come help him and you'll end up getting into the same brawl that you would in the middle. Just this time you're actually doing the right thing. Now staying on that same line of thought, there's another very common mistake that's made in relation to, I guess, ignoring the macro level of the game. And that's communicating on that macro level and more specifically knowing how to call things out. I think again, Warsong is probably the best example of this, but I'd say that this applies to pretty much every BG out there. Communication is key, especially outside of a pre-made. Within a pre-made, generally you'll have a couple shot callers. Communication is kind of established already. People are in comms and it's generally not that much of an issue. But when it comes to pugs, communication is, I'd say a make or break factor. And to be honest, you might not be the greatest player out there. You might struggle in 1v1s. You might not have any keybinds. You might not have great gear but if you can communicate you might actually be one of the greatest assets on your team and knowing how to communicate is the most important part so when it comes to flag carrying in warsong for example you need to know which part of the map is called what there's three specific points that are really important when understanding the lingo on each side of the map you have the graveyard the tunnel and the ramp if you see somebody going for flag and he's going from ramp side you tell your friends efc going ramp or somebody's going for the flag on ramp side if somebody already picked up your flag and you see them exiting the base and they're going graveyard side you say EFC exiting graveyard tunnel you say EFC exiting tunnel and beyond that you want to communicate whether the EFC is running through mid whether he's running tree side or stump side on one side of the map you have a fully grown blossom tree and the EFC can run behind the silver wing or the alliance berserker hut and then go behind that fully grown tree behind the wrecked trolley make his way up the mountain and then jump onto the graveyard you need to communicate that that's the side that he's on I usually like to say tree side although yeah a lot of people don't know what you're talking about and on the opposite side you have the stump so on the side of the Alliance Rejuvenation Hut and the Horde Berserker Hut, there's this massive stump and there's actually ways to wall jump up on top of it without being seen pretty much from the people fighting them in the middle, then jump down. You can either go up the graveyard on Alliance side or go behind the Berserker Hut on Horde, make your way up the ramp. And communicating this is extremely important. This is the type of stuff that will allow you to form your team together to coalesce, get together and halt the enemy flag carrier in his path with good coordination. When it comes to AB, it's about calling bases preemptively so noticing that people are heading to a base before they actually get there is super important. In AV, it's about calling towers, it's about calling graveyards and things like that. And in general, this is super important and probably the most important thing to winning BGs outside of personal skill or individual skill. All right, so now let's give Alderac Valley a little bit of love with their own piece on this list. And the mistake that we're referring to when it comes to AV is capping the wrong graveyard. Now, this might seem maybe a little bit unintuitive. AV is this big map and it's got tons of points all over and you're trying to dominate the map so a lot of people they see a graveyard they want to cap it they want to gain as much land control as possible in the valley of Altrak. this sometimes can be a mistake and sometimes it's unavoidable because you know you have 40 people within one bg people aren't communicating on comms at all and it's hard to get everybody on the same page so if you have 10 people that are all trying to execute on one specific strategy in order to end the game it only takes one guy who's out of the loop to i guess kind of ruin it or put a stick in the cogs and 
kind of halt the plan a little bit. What I'm talking about here is tactically camping graveyards. So AV is kind of like a linear map. It's very long and basically on interval throughout the entire length of the map, there's a ton of different graveyards. So let's say you're Horde side and you're trying to siege Vandar. You've maybe already capped Icewing Bunker. You've already capped Stonehearth Bunker and your team is focused on Dunbaldar, maybe with a couple minutes left to cap the North and South Bunker within the Alliance base. And you've already got the Stormpike aid station. So the graveyard within the Alliance base. So in this scenario, sometimes the players on Horde side will purposely not cap the Stone Hearth graveyard, which is the mid portion Alliance specific GY, not counting the Snowfall graveyard. The reason that they do this is because they want people who are trying to get north side to the Alliance base. Let's say they die near Icewing Bunker. They want them to res in the Alliance base rather than resing outside and having to constantly fight their way through the path to get there. It's a tactical decision where they're kind of allowing people to teleport to the Alliance base after dying once. And if you coordinate it properly, people can literally go there and purposely die and then just immediately teleport to the Alliance base. You start congregating your forces there. And it's one of the most effective ways to get your team through without having to go through the bridge or having to battle your way through the middle bunker area. And of course, this equally applies to Alliance. They can do the exact same thing with the Frostwolf Relief Hut and not capping Iceblood Graveyard and maybe not even capping the Frostwolf Graveyard and same thing on Horde. They can not cap the Stormpike Graveyard, leave those two and just have people constantly teleporting to the Alliance base after death. The macro level game in Alterac Valley in Vanilla is incredibly important. There's a little bit of depth to it. It's not like in later expansions where people kind of ignore the macro game. They ignore the strategy and they're just rushing. Even though the rush strategy can sort of be implemented in the 1.12 version of AV, there's still a lot more depth to it because it's just not as brain dead in terms of the level of difficulty with all the NPCs. And of course, honor grinding makes people play entirely differently in this environment compared to just grinding the bonus at the end. All right, so this last one that we're going to cover is something super, super important, but I'm going to try to do it quickly here to not make the video drag on for too long. We're talking about spinning the flag. And if you don't know what this means specifically, it refers to sacrificing your body in order to just AOE around the flag and stop the enemy team from being able to cap it. This is something that people really need to take into consideration. And I'd say it's probably most prevalent in Arathi Basin, of course. If you guys are controlling a point and let's say you just got wiped out or a lot of your forces just died and you're most likely going to lose the battle. You need to keep in mind that your teammates are not so far away. They just died and they might be resing in 5, 10, 15 seconds, depending on how lucky they got. Of course, it can go up to 30 if they all got super unlucky with the res timer, but they're basically right at the graveyard a couple yards away from you. I've seen it so many times where there's one guy or two guys who can just stay at the flag and AOE it and stop the enemy faction from capping it for maybe 10 seconds, allowing us to res, come back, reinforce and win the battle and secure the base. But instead, they opt of just running away, acting like the battle is gone and they just don't want to get another death. This is something that you want to take into consideration. And if you're a class like a mage, for instance, you can do this really, really well. You can frost nova them, cone of cold, arcane explosion. Before you die, you can ice block, wait the ice block. They might try to cap it, get out of the ice block and then start hitting them again. You can stall for easily 20 seconds, maybe even longer, depending on the scenario. So just because you lost a couple teammates and it looks like in the short term, you're going to lose the battle. You got to think about the long run. You might win on the second round once your teammates come from the graveyard. So stall the cap, spin the flag and wait for those reinforcements. So there you have it. Some of the most important and some of the most common mistakes that you should try to avoid in BGs and Classic WoW. This is all from personal experience. So of course, there's a couple or probably some really important ones that I might have forgotten and maybe, you know, obvious ones that I probably knew about and for some reason just couldn't pick out of my brain while brainstorming for this video. So like always, make sure if you guys have a great point of insight to leave it in the comments like usual. The entire point of this video, the entire point of the comment section of this video is to educate people, to help people understand exactly what they need to do in order to win as many BGs as possible. That's the name of the game. Not everybody plays in a top pre-made. A lot of people, in fact, most people, maybe like 90% of the people that are queuing BGs are just queuing by themselves. So this is really useful information and I hope it helped you. And if it did and you like this video, want to see more like it, make sure, of course, like usual, to leave a like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill, soldiers. Hit the notification bell to be notified every single time I post a new video straight out of the render oven. And with that said, Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.